Now, Israel, or Jacob, loved Joseph more than any of his other brothers because he had been born to him in his old age. He made an ornate robe for him. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father loved Joseph more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. His brothers said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated Joseph all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Let's pray together. Merciful and loving God, thank you for this worship celebration. Thank you for the launch of this season of pride. Thank you for your presence and movement in and through this, your people, and this, your church. Thank you for the ministry and music. Now come to us in the ministry of the word. Reveal yourself to your people in all the ways that they can receive and hear. That we may be transformed by your very presence. In your many names we pray this day. Amen. When I became a member of Metropolitan Community Church of Washington, D.C., there was a young man there, a beautiful young man, who always amused us. That's a kind way of saying that he was very annoying. <laughs> but he was a very interesting, different young man. He had found this community and he could finally be who he was. And so he flittered and floundered about, always coming up with some new way to amuse us again and annoy us. And the interesting thing about him was that he was so sweet and often didn't realize that we were rolling our eyes at him most of the time. And one of the funny things he would do was every other week he would come with a different name. And so we didn't know what to call him on some Sunday, so we would call him all the names that he had given us. And it was our way of needling him a little bit, so we would call four, five, six names that we could remember that he had called himself. And we were kind of protective of him, but again, sometimes the annoyance made you not want to be. But he was a part of our community, and we did love him dearly. And then one day we got the word that he had drank uh, antifreeze. And he held on for about two weeks. And in that time, we'd asked him, why? Why would you do this? And then the truth began to be revealed. I've been planning it for some time now. And in so many words, I know how ridiculous I seem to you. I know how I look. But more important than that, my family of birth has no place here. So this is what I chose to do. So when he died, it took a little while to get over. And I would mention to my husband on occasion, I don't know what to do. And just to clue you in, I still don't. But I want to tell you that story because there was something about Joseph that was different. There was something about this 17-year-old that his brothers 
and his family just couldn't get their minds around it. Old Psalm attributed his weirdness and his awkwardness to him being the youngest child. And some said, oh, it's, it's because Jacob favored him that we just couldn't stand it. Well, and he annoyed us. Because when we wanted to talk body and when we wanted to skip out on tending the flock, he went and told daddy what we did. And then to top it all off, he has these weird dreams. And what's up with these dreams? We've got work to do. And why does he always come out looking better than us in the dream? Oh, his father Jacob didn't help matters because we are told that he, he, he loved Joseph more than the others and he showered him with gifts, revealing that Joseph was kind of different. As a matter of fact, it, 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 this giftedness, he felt compelled, Jacob felt compelled to give him a colorful uh, 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 coat or robe. It, it, the various translations, some call it a richly ornamented robe a coat of many colors, a long ornate robe with sleeves, all of it saying to us that whatever this kid is wearing, he's a delicate finery person. We work with our hands. And please don't get offended, but our brother is a sissy. He's vain and self-absorbed. But however it is described, this one, this Joseph was different. He was special. He was delicate. He was vain. He was very annoying. But the authors tell us that Joseph couldn't deny who he was. He didn't even want to. And I want you to continue. We didn't get a chance to read all, but I want you to read Genesis 37 because what you'll find out is Joseph was going to be who he was going to be. And no amount of hate, no amount of, of, of mimicking and, and teasing was going to stop Joseph from being who he was. And on that fateful day, Genesis, tell the office of Genesis, tell us, that his brothers were far away and Joseph went to look for them. And yes, Joseph went to look for them in his dainty ornamented robe. And they were embarrassed by him. Look at him. Look at them. Come in here to look for us dressed like that. And they decide to kill him. Couldn't take it. Let's kill him. It's too much for us. Let's get rid of him. Cooler heads prevail, so they didn't kill Joseph, but they sold him into slavery. You see, the problem was that they feared him. They hated him. Who knows what Joseph's dreams meant? Who knows what this was about? Who knows who this kid was? But it was too much. He was embarrassing. He was annoying. We can't, ha we can't have him. He's upsetting our standards. He's upsetting how we live. He's upsetting our, how we're supposed to show up as a family. We can't have it. So they sold him into slavery. So this shows you what happens when a family, when any people cannot stand the difference in their midst. It shows you what happens when people can't begin to understand that the difference may mean something else than what we think it is. It shows you what happens when a family can't come together. They will conspire to kill literally or figuratively. They wanted to be rid of their brother, his queerness, his dream. But here's where the story changes. Because selling Joseph into slavery is not going to interfere with what God has for him to do. Trying to get rid of the one who is different and queer is not going to stop God from using God's people. His brother's rejection of him will not prevent Joseph 
from realizing, experiencing his gifts, his blessing, his calling. God will work God's purposes even in a vain, delicate, arrogant sissy boy who's wearing a funny coat. They could not kill the dream. Joseph's dream may even be a dream deferred for a season, but it would not be a dream denied. The dreams that called his brother to hate him and to sell him would be the dreams that will lead him to the top of the heap. Oh, you say, Pastor, how do you know? How do you know? Because the authors of Genesis tell us by God's providence, Joseph will find himself in the governing councils of Pharaoh. Joseph will become the one who will save the empire in its darkest days. Joseph will become our exemplar of forgiveness and reconciliation when he meets his brothers once again. And they say, we know you want to get revenge. We know you hate us. And what he says to them, oh no, even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good. I forgive you. I love you. You are my brothers. Oh, you all didn't hear it. The one they thought they killed, the one they thought was gone, was the one that God used. Now, what am I telling you this for? I'm telling you this because many of us grew up in families that thought we were too different, thought we could not understand who we were, that our dreams were ridiculous dreams. Yes. That and so as this, we get into this pride season, I want you to look at it and see that in our uniqueness, in our colorfulness, in our differences, we remain gifts of the divine creation. That through God's providence, we can be all that God has called us to be. We can be. And so don't let anybody tell us that who we are and the way that we show up that the very depth of our being is somehow inimical to God's desire for us. It is not. If we remain true in our identities as God's beloved, God can use us. I don't think you're convinced. I think you're looking at me with this colorful stole and thinking, oh, he's, been, he's lost his mind. But I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you. We all remain available for God's good work. All of us. All of us. Even those who think, even of all those of us who think that we don't have it. We're not gifted enough. We're not pretty enough. We're not smart enough. Uh, we, we, we bought what they've said about us. We, we can't, we're so convinced that we're an abomination. We sometimes think it's not possible. I'm here to tell you, you are wrong. If we look to Joseph on those darkest days when he wondered what will become of me, the very things that called them to hate him became the very things that built a nation. The very things that they said made him weird and awkward and queer were the very things that God used to bring about wholeness and reconciliation. Some of us ask, why do we have to have these pride celebrations? Why do you all have to parade around? Oh, we get it every year. And I don't know what your answer is, but I believe we celebrate pride because we are God's own special creation. Not better than anybody else. Not lording over anybody else, but that we are the unique expressions of the divine creation. And as such, we have a right and a privilege to show off our coats of many colors, literally and figuratively. Show them off. Let them know you're in the room. You may not know it. I don't know how many people hang out, hang out with me very much. But I show my colors all the time. I'm a proud man. A proud gay man. I have a right and a privilege to be all God has called me. And it took me a long time to get there. But like Joseph, those darkest days became a way of showing me that God can and will use me if I allow it. We have a right and a privilege to share our dream of a world 
filled with singing and dancing, affirmation and celebration. Because we are, we know something that some people don't seem to know or that they take for granted. That even when it looked bleak for us, God kept us. And that every day that we breathe life, unlike the kid I met so long ago who is no longer with us, we're able to hold on to a truth that we are God's special creation, gifted, beloved, full of potential, ready to show us 